All right, another Puro video. Hopefully the last. <laughs> Let's keep trying anyway for the last. Um, the last in this form where you have seven subjects in one video. Um, really no point. Um, and the last in this sense of this crap about who said what, when, and all that shit. I don't, I don't think you have any... I don't think there's any defense for your argument um, that I have changed a position or had positions you've argued have had. I think they're just blatant and grotesque lies and I think most of the people who even watch your videos can't come up with any clips or any proof that I've said the things you say I've said or changed the positions you say I've changed. It's bullshit. And it, the record of the bullshit is the last two years of controversy between us because it's always about these this bullshit. So, fuck you. Alright, so the subject of vegetarianism, so he's the one changing the position, right? So in the last video he's arguing that somehow humans are meat eaters by nature, which is bullshit. And so now his statement is, we shouldn't eat meat. So he's conceding the argument. And he's basically stating that, okay, I still eat meat. I probably shouldn't. I don't eat that much. Uh, I try to do this, but yeah, I fail. Yeah, and where did I say that's not an acceptable answer? I accept that answer. What I don't accept is your argument that we shouldn't eat meat just means absolutely nothing. It means something like we shouldn't rape, but I'll give people the right to rape. Now, if that's the qualifier of that statement, we shouldn't eat meat, and that means that, well, if somebody else chooses to eat meat, it's okay, though. Then what's the point? So it's no value. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. We shouldn't. Why? Because you understand that it's unreasonable to impose harm on sensitive creatures for a convenience, but you don't think it's enough of an unreasonable thing to do to stop somebody else from being unreasonable. Where something overt like child labor or rape, okay, you'll, you'll concede. But you won't concede that this problem is a real problem. So again, it's just an empty statement. We shouldn't eat meat. It's just lip service. Because you won't give it any meaning in terms of creating a, a system to, to winnow the human race off meat, uh, to tax it or something, <laughs> like cigarettes, like it is a real vice, like it is a thing to be discouraged. Um, but will instead apply your libertarian standard of people have the right to choose their own solutions. Well, their solution is to torture. And that's not an acceptable solution where I'm sitting. And I can analogize it to other things done in history where people are marginalized for convenience and abused. And that's all this sounds like to me is an excuse for uh, slavery or concentration camps. If you take it seriously, if you understand the real harm, harm is harm. So, fuck that bullshit. All right. Uh, then the argument of insects. Again, I've never changed a position on this. I've always made the same argument. I've been making arguments for at least five years now. Um, when I, myself, um, discovered <laughs> that um, the mechanism of learning is the one fundamental to the creation of sensation. Because to learn in your own life, not genetic learning, not... Um, um, some kind of, I'm trying to think of a more, uh, an example of a, a mechanical response mechanism that really isn't learning, like conditioning isn't necessarily learning, but learning where you actually have to be rewarded or punished for getting the right or the wrong answer um, uh, for positive results. And that would be necessary to have a reward and punishment system to create a mechanism of learning. You have to have the word no, or the word stop, or the, there has to be the negative for the idea of wrong answer. That's why there's buzzers. Ding, ding, when you get the right answer. and When you get the wrong answer. Because it's duplicating the process of learning. Um, and I've made that argument for at least the last five years consistently. Um, there's no dispute on insects, except when you get to things that get a little creepy, like... Uh, 
clams and slugs and other organisms that have very, very, very tiny brains and do a very, very limited amount of learning through scientific investigation. Um, they're hard to teach or train to do anything and therefore it can be wondered whether they could possibly manifest anything called a sensation. But for most of the insects, once the ones we see and we're familiar with and have names for, those insects are actively experiencing, in my opinion, sensation. Yes. Meaningful only from my perspective, um, in the sense that it just makes the problem of sensation that much deeper and harder to solve because you're not going to fix the slavery that exists in nature in the insect world. The insect world has the most brutal life and death struggle. Um, the most extensive um, uh, Freddy's nightmare kind of existences. All right, you say it's okay to kill most living things as children. Yeah, so that would be my argument. So he says, I'm, I'm, I'll make the exact the accusation. He says he's not defending it. He's just saying there's good and bad things in nature. Well, that's the same as a defense. When you when when I say it's not good enough, and you say, but I think there's good and bad things. Well, then what's what does that mean? Does that mean that it's a good thing that um, most of the things killed? by nature are children. It's good, it's okay, it's acceptable. That's the price you're willing to pay. Well, it's not a price I think anyone should be willing to pay and I don't think we should be allowed to do it without gaining consent. So I think your pro-life argument is empty and vacuous and doesn't deal with the real fact that you're imposing harm uh, without any demonstration of an actual good. Um, all right, intellectual emotions like curiosity. Uh, so, so he applied that to being only in a mammalian function. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's an emotion in the first place. Curiosity. Um, you know, the, the the fact that organisms would have would have a desire to investigate would be conducive to their survival. So I would argue that they're probably experiencing that on the reptilian level and every other level. Yeah, even brought up reptiles. Who do you think reptiles are conscious? I, I can't I can't have made it more clear. I'm just saying go ask edible napalm if he thinks um, I haven't said the word neuron enough. Because I think edible napalm will say that yes, Gary has said the word neuron enough times. He really shouldn't have to say it any more times because he's said it so many times that everybody's sick of hearing the fucking word. So I think I've made it clear that I believe consciousness is a function of neurons and that obviously lizards have an extensive number of neurons, billions, um, quite capable of manifesting consciousness anyway. And they're obviously quite capable of learning tricks and such. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. So obviously, I've I have argued consistently that I associate all mental function that we call anything called consciousness or sensation to the existence of neurons. If you don't have neurons, you're not doing it. And even if you have neurons, you have to have enough neurons to do it. All right. We disagree on the implication of sensation. So that's probably the key thing here. Um, you think it's okay to leave organisms in harm's way. Um, let's see, ability to be um, yeah, harmed severely, and that's the implication. There's lots of stuff out there, and it gets brutalized and killed, and it's enslaved to it. So I could bring up ants or bees or lots of organisms who quite obviously through the natural system are bred to be slaves. They're, there's no... Um, there's no element that has anything to do with the quality of their life. The only consideration is the productivity of their life. They're entirely used uh, by the master organism and uh, the master DNA. And there's no opportunity for any quality of life, any good to be in there at all. And it's, you're just lying to yourself with a fable if you think it's anything other than what it is. A brutal harsh um, slavery and um, 
but you don't want to fix that. You don't think it needs to be fixed because you're the um, so it's not uh, a life form that's cute and fuzzy. It's not uh, you know it, it doesn't pull at some emotional string. And I would just equate that to being some kind of scenario where some aliens came here and because they couldn't understand us in some way, which I think would be difficult not to understand us, but let's just say they can't understand that we are sentient, um, and they would just disregard our welfare. And that's all you're doing. Uh, so they, they can say it'd be okay if we were living in slavery. And every moment of our life was just a struggle to keep ourselves alive. And we just went from one brutality to the next brutality and just survived it. And you'd say it's a life worth living. I'd say that's insane. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, so he said, yes, he said the exact words, I don't justify it. And then he basically said, I say it has good and evil. Well, evil really wasn't the subject. Um, <laughs> but, um, oh, that's an overt um, justification. If you don't justify it, then you say something like, I think it is without justification. <laughs> you know, you don't say, I say it has good and evil, implying that obviously it must have more of this good stuff than the bad stuff. That to you, the weight of the harm the fact that most of the living organisms on planet Earth will be killed as children, that is uh, not a significant enough fact to deter you from the fun of whatever the fun, good stuff is. It somehow is, it makes all of that okay. And that's your philosophy, and that's why we have a fundamental disagreement, and um, it's going to create an automatic tension between us and an intolerance for any kind of bullshit. I mean, why, you know, why should I interact with somebody who means me harm or means my kind harm? Um, you're a, you're defending the victimization of um, the losers um, for the benefit of the good seekers. All right, fight the facts of nature. See, that's the problem. You, there, you can't fix it. And the further down you make sentience go, the more impossible the fix becomes. So he's arguing that, well, we should fix it. We, we, we should fight it. We should fight nature. We should fight the injustices. There's no way to fight it. There's no way to fix it unless you exterminate it. You can't fix the lion-lamb problem. The lion's never lying down with the lamb. You're not going to fix the attrition that exists in the in mammal world. Most of the mammals breed in huge numbers because most of their children will die horribly. That's not something you're going to fix. You're just going to whitewash it and pretend it's not a bad enough problem to say the game has to be stopped. You'll accept a certain number of murders to have your football game just doesn't, it's okay, you don't, you, you, I guess I don't even know how high I could make the number or how brutal or horrible it is. How many baby elephants have to be eaten alive before you say it's too many? I wonder what the number would be. A zillion? <laughs> it doesn't seem that it has any limit for you, right? Why don't you give me a number? How many, if I told you how many baby elephants uh, got eaten alive by lions, and I told you that, um, you know, a certain number was going to happen, what would the number be where you'd say, gee, that's too many, we can't do this anymore? What's the number have to be? So anyway, uh, so yeah, there's this one part here, this 820, it was just too weird, so I thought I'd play it, because it sounded insane to me. For it, but I'm the one saying fight it. I think you're for it, because you want all the responsible humans to go away. <clears throat> I want all the, I'm, I don't want to fight it, and I want all the responsible humans to go away. How do I make sense out of that? I'm fighting it every way I can. I am suggesting we minimize the harm. I'm suggesting it all the time. I'm saying we should give up having pets because we're creating too many stray animals. Um, I'm fighting it by being a vegetarian, a uh, vegan. Uh, I'm fighting it by arguing for the welfare of animals and for their liberation from medical experiments and all this other crap. So how am I not fighting it? 
I'm fighting it though, as hard as I can fight it. But you're saying we should fix it. Well, I'm saying how are you going to fix it? What's your solution? It's what nature's built on is the slaughter of children. That's how nature works. It finds things that are flawed and it kills them brutally. That's nature, asshole. And it's a shitty system. And it's a stupid game. And this whole uh, trying to achieve the master race. I mean, that's all you people really are, right? You're just, well, we have to be here so we can become the master race and fly to another planet or something. And do something and put a flag in it to prove that we're the masters. Masters of what? A meat grinder. Fuck that. So, yeah, I guess I could play a little bit more, but that's always pretty bad. Yeah, that's just me. Alright, so then keep saying things like, look it up, which is just, you know, that's the, the physics argument. And I have looked it up. I've played their videos and pointed out the lies in their videos, the overt lies in Feynman's videos, the overt misrepresenting uh, the facts in the um, physics videos at places like MIT and Harvard. I've played the videos. I've detailed the crap on the web pages. Um, I've pointed out that the, what they state to be the truth isn't the truth. It isn't factually correct. So fuck you. And your bullshit is when go look it up. Well, the paramecium experiment, like I stated, um, was analyzed by somebody who wasn't uh, full of shit. <laughs> and it was easily discovered that all you had to do was turn the experiment upside down and now the paramecium's were twice as dumb so it just doesn't make any sense to say they got smart when all that really matters is where the light was anyway um uh let's see never um never a hundred percent okay yeah so he used this thing like i was for a hundred percent inheritance tax and never argued that as policy i have argued that in principle well, i don't know why we want any cheating but uh, we should as all as dignified males with testicles they we all should be supporting some sort of fair fight i mean the whole idea that people embrace cheating and and head starts just sounds like cowards and wimps to me um why, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to fight a midget and win? Sounds like a coward's road to success. Um, so, and, and then he pointed out cheating on inheritance tax. Well, and the fact is we had much higher inheritance taxes 50 years ago. And yes, there's some effort, but even back then they could trace people's money. And guess what? It's, it's easier than ever to trace people's money, okay, because the more and more electronic it becomes, the more and more it's hard to hide it. And uh, clearly we can pass legislation, meaning that we track all American dollars, and uh, people who own stock, we can certainly track all that uh, in the American Stock Exchange. And so there's, there's nothing um, preventing us from knowing how much wealth people possess, uh, absolutely nothing, and following the money. And just like you can do an audit on somebody's taxes, you could do an audit on what employment their children have and how they got their jobs and all of that stuff. So cheating wouldn't be hard to discover. So that's just a bullshit argument. Um, it's easier than it's ever been. We, we, we steal money from countries now. We just steal it because they can't hide it. It's hard to hide, asshole. Um, so anyway... Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, so it worked in the past, having an inheritance tax, and it'll it can work now. So it's just a, a bullshit argument. Um, so again, the stocks are investment part. He still doesn't understand that. That when stock is issued, the person, the business, who issues it, gets a ton of investment capital. They get a ton of cash, like Google. Google got a ton of cash by issuing stock and they have invested that is they have bought other companies with that capital that's what they do with it um, so it's kind of silly it's venture capital essentially um, that's what people do with the 
wealth they gain through making it public. And every time the stock is sold, you're basically just selling the loan, essentially. It's a loan, but it's a loan that never has to be paid back, right? So it's a kind of a strange instrument, stocks. Um, but you get paid a dividend if for owning it like it was interest, but you never have to pay back the principal. <laughs> That's the trick of it. It's a loan, but you never have to pay back the principal. Um, but it's certainly investment capital, and the fact that you don't understand that is your bad. Um, and, and frankly, anyway, it doesn't really matter in this conversation because the implication of your argument is that somehow the wealthy have um, um, secured away all the investment capital, and there's actually a surplus of investment capital. There's actually too much capital now, and there's too few good things, profitable things to invest in. And do, you have to understand that the only investments that are people are going to invest their money on are ones that are going to make money. They can't invest in things that are going to fail because that's really stupid. And so most of the investments made now are to compete with existing businesses which only degrade both of the businesses and sometimes just make the consumers pay more money in the end. So for a short time you have more competition, but in the long run you end up with a monopoly. So these are that's what happened in the search industry. You start off with a bunch of search engines and then they just got um, killed by Google doing the um, William Random Randolph Hearst thing of, well, we'll just give it away for free and drive everybody else out of business. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and what do we get in the end is, yeah, we get owned by a monopoly. Um, all right, uh, the agreement isn't the problem. So then he points out how we agree on some things. Well, yeah, it's not the, that's not the problem. The problem is that your agreement has no meaning. Like, just stating now, you just state now, we shouldn't eat meat. Well, you never said that before. So anything we agree on, you never talk about. And the only thing you seem to talk about are the things we don't agree on. So that's really the problem. You keep advocating for something different than the things we agree on. And that sounds like you we don't agree. When you start arguing for something different than what we agree on, then that sounds like a different plan, and that means we must not agree on the other plan. Duh. Um... So, and some of the disagreements are, as I've pointed out, they're just catastrophically unacceptable. Okay, so open borders is catastrophically unacceptable. Some stupid land tax is catastrophically unacceptable. Because as I've pointed out, I think it's no rich person will play the game as you think they're going to play. They won't cheat it. They'll quite legally evade it. Um, and quite rationally so. And even if you con conform it into some form that gives them less options, it doesn't matter in the end because any expense you impose on them, they'll just impose it on the consumer. Because once again, you still don't understand how the economy works. The rich only invest in things that make profit. If you take the profit out of the business, um, they have to raise prices to get the profit back or they have to screw their employees to get the profit back. So any tax you put on businesses just becomes a tax on consumption. So that's just stupid. You're not attacking the owners, quote unquote. You're taxing the function of the businesses, which is stupid. Um, let's see, people don't support... Uh, see, I brought up some kind of crap like that, like I was arguing that um, popular support had something to do with this. And I never argued be it's a better idea because people... Yeah, I didn't argue against the land tax because nobody would support it. I argued against it because it's stupid. <sighs> Jeez. Um, so, yeah, so we're in a situation where no, people don't support raising any tax. So all taxes are, uh, in a sense, um, you can argue about them all being unviable. And again, I'll just argue 
the arguments I've made is that if I had to defend a tax, I think the one easiest to defend is inheritance tax because it goes to this word fairness and earned. And these are rather powerful words. Um, and in spite of death tax rhetoric, once people understand that the money the rich people have is actually the workers' money or the consumers' money, that that's the only place they get their wealth from. They don't generate wealth. They take it out of consumers or they take it out of workers. They don't generate anything. But I'm just saying that argument is easier to make, I think, than obscure arguments about capital gains taxes. But clearly I would be for capital gains taxes being converted back into just regular taxes because unlike what they consider to be some sort of unfairness there is no unfairness because you're allowed to deduct from your taxes your losses your capital gain losses and so that fully compensates uh, for the risk of the investment and so it's kind of a moot argument um, you know there's no reason to consider the income anything other than real income and tax at the same rate you tax a worker's income which frankly a worker's income should be taxed less than somebody sitting on their ass making capital gains the fact that we have that so backwards is just another one of these things where people are obviously idiots and maybe we can agree that people obviously don't really understand the stupidity of the reward system we've created where we give greater benefit and and um, greater luxury and greater privilege to the people not working and we brutalize and more harshly tax the people who are working and I think once they understand that that maybe they could figure out that hey that's stupid and that might be a place where we can gain back some equity in the economy but again, it's arguing approaches and arguing what is um, a com the, the compatible package. And that's why I wished, and that's why I have argued in defense of isolating subjects. Because as I've stated, the problem in your public room, the problem in your room period is the change in subjects mean you're going to start getting on a subject or you're going to start saying something that's unacceptable. And I'm going to have to leave the table. It's disgusting crap. You're basically just saying, explaining how you're an evil asshole. And yeah, why would I sup with you? Um, so as soon as you get on the subject of your phantasmagorical bullshit that you think there's some good that gives you the right to torture things, well, I'm going to say, fuck you. And as soon as you distract from the real economic problem of the rich being too rich and start talking about some other modified capitalism or some other kind of bullshit you just create a non-starter you just make it clear that you're not really interested in solving the problem um, because you're just talking a bunch of crap that won't solve the problem just a stupid business tax um, and then you get it gets even worse than when you say something like open borders and then we're really done because clearly that's un economically unviable there's just absolutely no hope that could work. So, um, those are really deep. I'm just saying you're, you don't get how this is a real problem, but that's why Trump got elected, and it's a real problem. You know, you want to pretend immigration is just some sort of, oh, it's, you know, it's just a bunch of different food in the world, and why should we worry about having extra food? Uh, that's not what immigration is. So, um... Yeah, uh, let's see, yeah, so you just, yeah, so I, I would prefer to debate you on these subjects individually, including physics, and um, in individual videos um, narrowed to those subjects and um, narrowed to some sort of um, reasonable presentation of evidence where you can't just say, look it up especially when I have already looked it up and done videos dissecting the evidence and such. 
So anyway, that's enough of this bullshit. But, I mean, this argument that I've lied about anything or I have misrepresented an opinion, especially in any malicious or deliberate way, is the most bogus pile of shit. And I find it really offensive. <laughs> like, unacceptably offensive. So, um, just go fuck yourself. Um, you're lying piece of shit.